Hello, family. This is Refueling Your Faith, and we are continuing in our series for this year's God's assignments. And so, as you know, we have walked through God's assignments as a mother, God's assignment as a wife, God's assignment as a daughter, as we talked about how God can use our challenging situations to bring purpose. And so, uh, last month, we talked about profession. We started uh, professions. And I am an educator and Tanya White helped us to know how we can come alongside believers as well as to encourage educators to use that position to draw others closer to Christ. And today I have my sister, Lakeisha, Lakeisha Hutchinson, who will share with us. I am an entertainer. I'm in the entertainment industry. And so she'll share how God is using her. Um, if you want to see those episodes before, please go to the YouTube channel, Refueling Your Faith, where you can find all of those episodes and more. Like and share so others can um, be encouraged by the words that are shared. Lakeisha. I know Lakeisha from our church. Um, Lakeisha was in the young adult ministry and I was overseeing it as a staff member. And we just developed a bond and have continued that bond um, through a lot of different situations. She is like a little sister to me and I so appreciate our friendship. But I will let Miss Lakeisha introduce herself. Welcome Lakeisha to the Refueling Your Faith YouTube channel. So excited to have you today. Hey, Juanita. Thank you so much for having me, girl. Um, I love you to death. I love refueling your faith. I love the topic. I think this is in a season of alignment for me. Um, and I just am so grateful that, you know, God places people in your lives as he does. And this podcast and this YouTube channel has been a blessing to so many, uh, as you've been a blessing to so many that you touch in life just on a personal level. So I'm really, really, really happy to be here. Well, just tell us a little bit about yourself, Lakeisha. Who are you? So you'll find me on social media as Lakeisha Lorraine. All of my friends and family know my legal last name, Hutchison. But <laughs> for everything I do for work is yes. by my first and middle name, Lakeisha Lorraine. Um, so I am an actress, producer, and creative entrepreneur. Yeah. So that just basically means <laughs> I act, produce, and I actually own two companies. So Loving Life Productions. Yes. Uh, which is my film production company. I started in 2015. Yes. We're eight years strong. Yay. I'm so proud of the work we've been able to do. And it's a faith-based company. And then I just started a new company called the Naptown African American Theater Collective. Yes. And that is my theater baby. So uh, we're actually opening our first show. I'm on the set right now um, at the Phoenix Theater Cultural Center. And we are Indianapolis's first Black equity theater. Uh, which just means that we're the first Black-owned theater that's a part of the only union for stage professionals, the actors and stage managers. Beautiful. Just beautiful. <laughs> I love it, Lakeisha. Love it, love it, love it. And I have supported and seen her act as well as participated in when she's had her own works and it's beautiful yeah. job. So proud of you, especially in Indianapolis, you, Indiana. She is producing work to uh, encourage others and use our passions. So today's topic always uh, this year is God's assignments to really mm -hmm. recognize and take advantage of um, the ways God or the places God puts us that you don't have to work at a church. You don't have to be quote unquote, a minister to be used by God. And so um, before you must can be used by God, you have to first know God. So just share a little mm. bit about mm. how you came to um, know Jesus Christ as your personal uh, Lord. Okay. Yeah. And Savior. Yeah. So just share a little bit about that journey. Ooh, you said a word, sis. So before you can, what'd you say? Before you can share about God, you got to know God. Is that what you said? Got to know Basically, him. Yourself. To know him. And I think, yeah, I think to, I first encountered, I became saved uh, or professed uh, my belief in Jesus Christ at nine. Okay. Uh, I got baptized at nine. So and you grew up was, in church? I grew up in church, so we... My parents were married under uh, now past. We honor Reverend Smith okay. uh, at um, Light of the World Christian Church under Bishop okay. uh, Benjamin. Okay. 
Okay. And that's where I was at the accolade. <laughs> we did the candles in the beginning with Miss Williams and all of that. So I was there when I was really young. Okay. Um, and then we found our way, you know, uh, through a couple of different ministries, Pastor Moore, uh, New Era Church. It was Northside New Era when mm-hmm. I was there. A lot of love for the Moore family. Uh, and then we were at uh, New Life for a year, which is uh, one of our, uh, you know, my childhood church, Eastern Stars, uh, you know, uh, offsets. Uh-huh. And then we came to Eastern Stars. I've been at Eastern Star the longest like over 20 something years. And now I'm at New Beginnings Fellowship, which has always uh-huh. been family with Pastor yes. James Jackson. Um, so I've had just always had a strong faith community. Uh, and I feel like throughout, I really came to know Christ in my um, teen years. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was going through a lot of like peer, like a lot of attack from the enemy on my identity. Okay. And it came through the course of, you know, getting teased for my skin tone of being like a okay. darker skinned black girl. So getting teased by my own community about how dark I was like, okay. oh, you're burnt this, ugly this, you're dark or you're pretty for a dark skinned girl. So my self-esteem was attacked very early at a very early age, which is when my mother started really spending time with me in the word, mm-hmm. introducing me to scripture teaching me how to memorize scripture. And that's when my relationship really started to ve- to develop in the Lord. So that was at age 12. Middle okay. school was age 12 for me. And that's when I really came to have a relationship with God, yeah. to talk to him, to pray to him, to write to him, to express myself in that way. So my relationship was built at home. Mm-hmm. Uh, the church was just an edifier, but the yeah. church was not necessarily where my relationship was built. It's where it was honed. It's where I was learned more. So me learning who God was at that early age now has enabled me to kind of uh, encourage others wherever I am in every space. If they have a desire to know who God is, I just tell people it's just like any other relationship. If I don't talk to my friend Juanisa, we're not going to have a relationship. We don't make sure we spend time. So it's like you have to spend time with the Lord in order to know him. And then I love what you said about him being the Lord of your life. Mm -hmm. You have to decide which is so interesting right now in the world, everything happening. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do I want to do stuff Keisha's way? Cause Keisha way, she might go off on everybody. Right. (laughs) Do I want to do stuff Keisha's way or do I want to do it the Lord's way? Right. And it's like, so I have to, I can't be Lord of my life and make decisions that only feel good to me and are not ultimately good for me. I have to seek and pray and get counsel and hear from the Holy spirit to say, God, how do you want me to handle this? What do yeah. you want me to say? And yeah. that's how you know whether you want to be Lord of your life or whether you want the Lord to be Lord of your life. Yeah, that's beautiful. And what I find most beautiful about your story or what I want to highlight is how influential parents are in a child's relationship with God. I was blessed mm-hmm. with parents who knew God and lived it Mm -hmm. out the best that they could, obviously. And then ensure that I understood what that meant in my life. And then exposed me to programs at the church that would Mm -hmm. uh, solidify it. So just encouraging those parents who are watching Mm -hmm. today that even though children may act like they're not listening or this, Mm -hmm. that, and the other, you still plug And you still take the time to train your child in the ways of the Lord, because that's where success comes from, Um, that they would do the things that God, I love that your mom took time and saw that, Mm -hmm. hey, the solution to her identity issue or how to respond is by getting into the word of God and knowing who you are in him. I think that's just so beautiful. Yeah. And she, and she like our whole family, my dad, my brother, we used to have Bible studies together in the house. And I, I had so much, we had so much fun doing that. My mom also was, was a Sunday school teacher for a really long time at Eastern Uh Star. Uh, Now she works on the greeters ministry with my father, but we would take time out on Sundays or some other day of the week. And we would just, each of us, we went around and took turns for a while, several years. And we would pick out some scriptures and we would okay. come up with a topic and then okay. we would find some scriptures and, and just because it, it is, it's, I love that you said that. It's like, 
it's not enough just going to church. Yes. It's not enough because that's like a bucket. People nowadays want to put God in a bucket and it's like, okay, yeah. did this cool, but there's nothing intimate there. So yeah. If you never encounter God, you won't know him. Yeah. But once you encounter him, it will absolutely change your life. And that's what I always tell people who um, have, are turning away from the church or whatever. I try to encourage them, well, he's not just the church. <laughs> the church is within you. And once you encounter him, then you will understand. So I, I really am very um, intrigued by, passionate about the supernatural that is within our faith. And for us as believers to really start living that thing out. Uh, sometimes people need to see miracle signs and wonders. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to live and manifest in us for God's glory. Yeah. So people can understand this is real. This is yeah. not a plaything, right? Yeah. But yeah, I think you, you just you have to spend time with your kids because they want to know. Yeah. But there's so many other distractions out there so that many. will will take the time. Yeah, they will take the time. Absolutely. The devil is after everybody and especially kids, especially yeah. kids. Excellent. Excellent. Well, tell us a little bit. You're here because you are in the entertainment industry um, yeah. and God can use every passion. And so, but how yeah. did he begin to birth that passion in you? How did you begin to desire to do all the things that entertainment means? I mean, you do everything. I see you on commercials, uh, plays, <laughs> uh, all of the things. How did how did that start growing in you that you thought, hey, I think I could make this a profession? I think so. I've always uh, had the talent of singing, and I actually started off wanting to be a professional singer before being oh. an actor. I wanted to be like Whitney Houston and be like okay. the singer who acted. Okay. So I remember me and my parents. I think it was me and my mom. We used to listen to the Whitney Houston uh, cassette tape back. Okay. When I grew up in the nineties. And um, and I remember seeing Bodyguard. And I was like, I just want to. Whitney Houston is everything. I was like, I just want to wow. be like Houston. I want to sing all the time. I want to sell these records. And when I was younger, so my mom has a preschool, Selena Scalandra's preschool. It's been open for 31 years. It's uh, over there by Cathedral on West 30th Street. Uh -huh. And she would always do programs, as most preschools do. And we would sing songs and memorize okay. things. So I think I memorized like my first thing, like a Dr. Seuss book. Okay. back when I was maybe like three years old and they thought I could read but I memorized it because they used to read to me my father reads all the time okay so we will always have books and uh I memorized it at a very young age and my grandpa who's now now gone uh hmm. but he said this girl is reading and they was like, oh, Keisha know how to read. And my mama was like, she started looking. She was like, she don't know how to read. She just memorized the book. Uh -huh. So that's when they found out I could memorize things at about like two and a half, three. Okay. And then I started doing the programs at my mom's school. And my mom saw that I enjoyed performing in front of people. So she used to take the kids on field trips to go to like plays and stuff. And we went to yeah. Beef and Boards to see some play. Okay. And there were some kids on the stage, but none of the kids were kids of color. Okay. And my mom kept looking at all the kids and she was like, where do they get these kids? My daughter can do this. Yeah. <laughs> so uh -huh. she went and asked the lady at the front and she was like, yeah, she can audition. And uh, she was like, well, does she have a resume? And she was like, she's, well, how old was I then? It's like six or seven. She was like, uh -huh. she's like seven. No, she doesn't uh -huh. have a resume. But they were like, well, you know, does she sing at church? And my mom was like, yeah. They were uh -huh. like, does she do uh, programs at school? My mom was like, yeah. So she created this resume for me. Wow. I went and auditioned with like 200 other kids. I was one of seven kids that was chosen to start doing that show. And we had like 30 something shows. So at the time I was a straight A student, I didn't start making B's or anything until like late in middle school, right before okay. high school. So I was very academic and very social. So mm -hmm. I could, you know, that was a thing. And, and actors actually, people don't know this. They have to be very academic. Because okay. what we do is we're thinking about multiple things at the same time uh -huh. and emoting spiritually, but we're uh -huh. thinking before it happens as it's okay. happening. So I always like to debunk that thing about actors not being smart. Actors uh -huh. are very intelligent because there's okay. so much we have to think about simultaneously. It's okay. not an easy job at all. Okay. So those, those things were actually key for me in doing my job now. Uh -huh. um, so after I, I got the job at Beef and Boards, I used to leave school. 
uh, I got to get out of school early, go practice with the adults. And there were two uh, black uh, talent in the cast that beat from boys at the time, Miss Robin, I can't remember her last name, and another gentleman. And I remember okay. seeing them in between scenes and I was in scenes with them. And I think that was the first time I realized because I that was my first paid thing okay. at eight years old uh, at the dinner theater. And it was a, it was an equity theater. I didn't know what equity was at the time, but it, it is an equity theater. OK. And I was like, oh, wow, they're doing this. Like, uh-huh. I could do this. So me seeing them in that show allowed me to realize, oh, I could do this all the time. Because I'm already doing it at eight. I'm getting out of school. I'm having fun. I love what mm-hmm. I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was the first thing that sparked. And then also having <laughs> having the love of Whitney Houston and Mariah yeah. Carey and stuff like that, you know. <laughs> so all of that happened at the same time. So it was, it was about eight years old. Yeah. That is one. Again, mom is is the MVP in this listen, story. Okay. <laughs> listen, mama be on it. Shout out to Miss Selena. Okay. She yes. I absolutely love it. So wonderful. So this episode is about how God is using you with this passion that's not um to share the, you know, not to be working at a church, but in the marketplace, as I call it. Mm-hmm. Can you share some ways in the years that you've been doing this, how you see God using you to draw people closer to him? In what ways have you seen that? And you can share a couple examples or just whatever comes to mind. I feel like um, I feel like we have a, a misconception of who Jesus was. Because we don't read, we, a lot of Christians see the scripture very Pharisaic. So it's kind of like, I am a Christian and I am better and I'm going to heaven and I am above you all. And Jesus was not like that at all when you yeah. actually read the Bible. Actually, the, yeah. the religious people of the time hated him and they were the ones that ultimately killed him. Yeah. They were responsible for his death, which was all a part of the plan. But yeah. Jesus hung out with everybody. Yeah. Right? He was, you know, he welcomed a prostitute into his yeah. camp, right? He, so I think for me, it's just kind of like, I would much rather be around beautiful people who have Christ attributes and don't know it, mm-hmm. right? May not know how to spell Jesus, but mm-hmm. they are exemplifying the character of Jesus. Mm-hmm. So then with me knowing who God is, as you mentioned before, and not who mm-hmm. he is in like the religious sense, yeah, but who he truly is by reading the word, by spending time with him, by seeing the, the how to bear the fruits of the spirit. It's just allowed me to show people who Christ really is just yeah. by regular interaction. Yeah. And I'm a I love people. I think um every person deserves to like I always try to learn about new things and meet new things. So I think that's just just with interaction, uh and yeah. personal one on one. I don't yeah. know if I'll ever be nobody's preacher or nothing like that. Yeah. But I like interacting with people on a personal level. Yeah. So I think just through even when I worked at regular jobs, um, like I worked in the corporate world for a while. It's just even how you handle certain situations. Um, you know, it could be like HR things. It could be anything. Uh, it's it's how you choose to handle it that shows uh, who you serve. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you do serve God and you're not operating in that way because you're human, then you have a chance to correct that. And you have mm-hmm. a chance to say, okay, that was wrong. Let, let me Let me double it back and let me level with you. So I would say that for me, I know that was very general. Um, I have a lot of specific examples, but I think the way God has placed me, I'm just able to just talk to people. Mm -hmm. And I think every person, which is what Jesus did, he just talked to people. Yeah. Don't feel like you're too good or too clean or whatever. Because really, we all ain't nobody got it together. (laughs) We have not arrived. (laughs) Nobody. You know what I mean? And I, I, I really, it really bothers me within our culture when I see that shown, especially politically, because none of those things I believe are um, what the word says. Mm -hmm. And I truly believe if Christ were walking this earth right now, he would say something real slick in the parable way, but basically like you ain't it (laughs) basically in short, you know what I mean? For all of the stuff that's going on, it would just be like, he'd be like, not at in it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that would shock a lot of people who think that they are doing it right, but it's just not, it's not what I read. And I think uh-huh. we all know how to read in the English language. So it's like, yeah. let's read, let's get back to the basics. 
and let's figure out how we can do this in the way that God intended. Yeah. I love two things that you express, just having a curiosity about people, just wanting to get to know people and allowing them to get to know you. Like the second point is when you're living it out, you'll just automatically be different. Mm -hmm. And people will see that difference in the normal things that all of us encounter in, in life you know, situations on the job, this, that, and the other. How is it that Lakeisha or Wanisa or whoever handled the situation when this is how I would have handled it, but yet there's some way that they handled, man, that's a, that you talk about miracles. That's a miracle how she handled and was able to, <laughs> to gather herself and be able to respond in a way that was kind and this, Wow, where did that come from? How did you know that just in living every day life? And yeah. I, there was something I just saw not too long ago on uh, Facebook that we're the Bible that many people, that's the only Bible many people will see. And so the importance of allowing God to be Lord, to be mm -hmm. the director of our lives is so important. And that doesn't mean, and, and it's outside of the church walls. like. Yeah. You can act a certain way, which we know people are going to act how they act, even within the church walls. But when you find yourself outside of the church walls, your greatest impact is simply how you talk, mm -hmm. how you think, what you do. It is automatically countercultural to what the world does. And so yeah. it's such an encouragement for what you said to just live it out. And God yeah. can use your obedience to his standards as a way to draw people closer to Christ. Yeah, because you're only at church, what, a couple times a week? You are the place. I mean, and that's the thing, too. I think sometimes when we get so heavenly minded, we're no earthly good. You are at church for a couple hours. Mm -hmm. Even if you active, me and you, Juanita, we've been active in ministries all the time. Mm -hmm. Even if you're the most active ever in life, you still mm -hmm. gonna be other places more than you're going to be at church. Yes. Max, you, you know, even if you're there every day for a couple hours for all 10 ministries you're a part of, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Which I don't know if I recommend that because you right. you can't really serve 10 ministries. You know, you got to pick one or two. But yes. like you are still other places more. So yeah. how are you walking like Christ in those places, yeah. right? That's what really matters. It is. And, and that is the church. And to me, the church, the building that you go to and there's programming and these type of things. Um, when you look at church that way, it's to me a fueling station yeah. for me to gather yeah. and be encouraged and um, get that, hey, teamwork. And then we go mm -hmm. out into the world to be his representatives and draw people yeah. closer to you. It's not the destination. Like once I no. go to church, I've done what Christians do. No, this is right. just a fueling station so that you can go out into the world and do what yeah. Christians do so that others may see your good works and glorify the Father, as the scripture says. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Well, when you think about the body of Christ coming alongside um, those in the entertainment industry, um, how can we be praying for you? How can we mm. be praying for those who are in a world that you know the world see as worldly i mean there's mm -hmm. so many it seems like anyway it is, opportunities it is. to you know go against god's standards in maybe a role that you play or whatever the case mm -hmm. may be how can we as believers pray for or help support uh those in this industry i love that question because i think people have to be okay with saying no I tell actors all the time, if you are just in this for the money, and that's what people don't understand too. They're like, well, why is she doing this? And why does she get, why does Vanessa have a YouTube channel? Why is she on the radio? Why does she have a book? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because she started off with the passion. You didn't do it to do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. that, that's what people don't understand. We don't do this stuff just to be seen. Yeah. We do this because we love it. And then things happen. Yeah. And I think when it when you are getting into this business, you really have to ask what is your why? Do you really yeah. love this as your job? Mm -hmm. Do you really love like 
uh, seeing things from other people's point of view because that's what the actors love. We love seeing things from other people's point of view, mm-hmm. putting ourselves in other people's shoes, discovering mm-hmm. we're we're curious about people. Mm-hmm. So that's why act a lot of actors do what they do, or they also like performing in some sense, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then as producers, you like putting together the whole thing. You like having mm-hmm. a hand in the set, and yeah. you know, working with the team, and everybody uh-huh. having their job, and we come together and make this really dope gumbo. Yeah. Or if you're a business owner, you like being able to uh, make a living off of empowering people or providing some sort of service to other people, right? Mm-hmm. So my production company, we do service in that way. Uh, and so does the theater, we do services and nudity. But I think mm-hmm. the biggest thing is like having your hard no. There was a role mm-hmm. I just told my uh, castmates about the other day. And I remember, I can't remember how many years ago. This might have been like mm, eight years ago now. Okay. And I got this really cool job offer to act in some uh, film that was supposed to be going to Sundance. It was like a guaranteed Sundance thing from some like okay. upper level producer. And I think it was like um, the most I've been paid for film because uh, okay. we live in Indiana. There's not a lot of we don't have any studios yet here. Mm-hmm. So there's not huge work in Indiana. But however, you can do really good work here. Okay. Uh, but a lot of like what people know as Hollywood is still it's still very much in Hollywood. But we can bring it, we can bring it here because we just got a film tax incentive. But I'm rambling. So anyway, so some really good rate, but they wanted me to be nude. And for me, I'm like I'm an actor. I'm not a porn star. So yeah. a lot of what we see right now is soft porn. And I'll mm-hmm. be honest, I love Shonda Rhimes. I love me mm-hmm. some Shonda. Okay, uh-huh. I can't wait to work with her. But uh-huh. a lot of her stuff has a lot of things in there, right? Yeah. And I don't necessarily have to act in those things. Yeah. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. like, so, so anyways, it, it had some really explicit scene and I don't do those. Okay. So I asked the uh, producer, I was like, hey, I don't really do explicit love scenes. Is there a way mm-hmm. you could do this? And I showed them an example of Sanaa Lathan, who's one of my favorite actors. I love a lot mm-hmm. of her work. There's a really great scene that's intimate and all mm-hmm. of the things and sexy and shows the relationship between two people that are together, but mm-hmm. it's tasteful. You don't really mm-hmm. see anything. There's nobody's neck, you know, it's just tasteful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they was like, no, you don't do it this way. We won't do it. I said, oh, okay, then no, thank you. Mm-hmm. I needed the job. It would have been great to bump up, but it's kind of like, don't sell your soul. Cause what yeah. you see a lot in my industry is that people um, deal with thoughts of suicide and issues because the goal was never about the job or the why, or they never had any hard no's. And these are Christians as well. You see okay. a lot of high profile Christians and, and Lecrae's open about his journey. Mm-hmm. And as he got popular and kind of kind of denouncing the faith and then coming back and saying, dang, I was tripping. Mm-hmm. You don't have to change who you are yeah. to make it. Yeah. Like you don't have to do that. Mm-hmm. God will make a place for you. There are so many believers in this industry God has connected me with so many believers locally in LA, in New York. We're everywhere. Don't mm-hmm. let it confuse you. However, it is a very dark industry. Everybody's yeah. into a whole lot of stuff. And you have to be able to respect whatever they're into, but also respectfully say, no, thank you. Yeah. You don't have to participate to, to get ahead. That yeah. is not our system. I don't yeah. operate on the world system. I operate on God's system. Yeah. And if you, if you, can understand that his he runs the universe jesus yeah. does not the universe yeah. jesus yeah. runs the universe yeah then you're good yeah but i think if you're unclear on that and you are desperate yeah the enemy knows that as well so then yeah. you're going to put yourself in a situation that you'll regret and it's really hard once you get up in some stuff yeah. it ain't easy to get out right get out. and you will have to be willing to lose everything to get out. And some people just aren't. So that's why we see very unfortunate stories about all of these struggles, right? Yeah. Because people are struggling with decisions that if they would have been clear from the beginning, especially for yeah. our believers, mm-hmm. you just got to have your hard nose. Yeah. So we need to be praying for courage yeah. for those that are to stand on their standards, which are... Mm-hmm. Christ standards, and then that they would trust, you all would yeah. trust that um, God will make a way. If he's giving yeah. you that passion, he's going to make a way. And you are a prime example of that. We've had conversations that it's just so wonderful to see where you are now. Um, we do need to bring this to a close, but I want you to share 
You've already showed some of your social media for those who are in Indianapolis. She has a couple of shows coming up with the second company. So just share a little bit about, you know, what's coming up with um, NAATC, right? Um, yeah. That you just share a little bit about that. So those who watch this real time can yeah. participate. Yeah, and we actually invite everybody from all over. Like we have people okay. coming from Ohio and wherever. Okay. So what the goal for the Naptown African American Theater Collective is for Indianapolis to grow into an Atlanta. Uh, you know, I don't know if we have the infrastructure to ever be in New York, but we can grow into a larger city with a, a more um, diversified cultural base. So people can plan their lives to say, ooh, I'm going to come to Indianapolis and stay at the JW or the garage. I'm going to go see an NAACC show. I'm going to go yeah. see a Phoenix Theater show. I'm going to yeah. go see an RT show, a Asante show, whatever. So that is my personal goal as we okay. grow into this, uh, you know, wonderful, beautiful hodgepodge of all these other theaters in the city. So um, we have 12 shows, okay. uh, three weekends. So we, we open this weekend. So the show starts August 25th on Friday. Uh, and we have our shows run typically Thursday through Sunday. Okay. So Friday through Sunday, we have shows uh, for the next three weeks. So August 25th through September 10th, uh, we are doing Detroit 67 by Dominique Mariso, fellow Midwestern girl, Detroit, who now works all over. Um, and this story is all about love, the audacity to dream and hope all on the streets of New York in 1967. So it's a beautiful story. It's powerful. It's poignant. It's hilarious. It's touching. It's all of the things. I'm not just saying that because we're doing it. It really, really, really is. So you can get your tickets at naatcinc.org. You can sign up for our newsletter. You can join the fam and be a volunteer. We will have educational classes soon. So you can learn how to uh, make sets like this or direct. Or be like in the lighting booth, like them up there and do all awesome. the things. So we'll have all kinds of fun stuff. But um, that's what's going on with NAATC. And then Loving Life Production, yes. uh, we're here to service all kinds of clients. So whether you're larger, whether you're growing and you will be larger, whether you're on your way, I love helping our clients to help bring their brands to the masses. So my goal is always to bring that same quality to everyone that other people have at their disposal that have $100,000 budgets, right? Yeah. So everybody deserves a great promo for their website, for their t-shirt line or their cooking company or whatever. Yeah. Um, so that's what we do. So you can visit lovinglifeproductions.com uh, to see some of our work. And we're also working on a TV pilot this year okay. where the strike is happening right now with SAG after. So it's been put on hold, uh, but prayerfully that will be over soon. So we can resume filming this fall and then we'll have a premiere uh, this winter. And the TV show is called Line of Justice. And it is about a detective, uh, Leslie Peters, who is doing her best to stay on the right side of justice while her enemies hide in plain sight. Okay. So it is a it is a murder mystery. There are always elements of faith, of the Christian faith and uh -huh. everything that is produced that I produce through Loving Life. Uh, and I hope you know to be a Shonda Rhimes of my own yes, I love you, Shonda. <laughs> and my little thing I know like Shonda's big on like you know very passionate about the LGBTQ community I'm very passionate about Jesus clearly mm -hmm. so all of the stuff uh, that we produce always has some sort of faith-based element so if you yes. love Jump in the Broom you're gonna love the stuff that I produce through Loving Life Loving life. Beautiful, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. Well, Lakeisha, before we leave, I just want you to pray for okay. those who are watching, who are called to this industry, that um, they would be sensitive to how God wants to use them in the passions that he's given them. Because as we have a hope, <laughs> people have um, taken away thus far as God can use you anywhere. So just yeah. be sensitive to him. So if you would just lead mm -hmm. us in a, a word of prayer. Uh, let's All right. Father God, we just thank you so much for this time that we have together. I thank you so much for the call that you have on my sister Juanita's life. And I thank you for the call and the life of every person on this call. I pray for everyone uh, who may be called to the entertainment industry to know that that desire that they have in their heart to do all of the things that are film, TV, radio, 
whatever it may be, that that, that is a God-given call. And that if you have called them to it, you will bring them through it. So there is opportunity there. There is provision there. I pray that they would trust your guidance. I pray that they would walk in your way to get what they want. I pray that um, you would direct their desires to let them know that even though they might have a plan, your plan will always prevail. So I pray that they be sensitive to following your plan and direction uh, for their lives. And in doing that, spend time with you. Spend time in communion with you, praying with you, reading your word, uh, joining with other like-minded hearts and souls who are followers of Christ. So I pray that they have the courage to stand on your principles, walk in your way, uh, and live uh, in your fruits of the spirit uh, in this industry so that they can be the light on the hill and the salt of the earth that we are called to be. Uh, They are seen, they are important. You are seen, you are important, and you are loved by God. So we thank you for the gifts that you have, and we pray that you have the courage, but even hopefully my story inspires you to uh, go after what God has been calling you to do for some time. Uh, So we thank you for all this uh, that you've given us, uh, the responsibility you've given us. We don't take it lightly. And we pray that for every leader and every person in this area that you would give them um, the grace that they need uh, to keep going, because your grace is sufficient. Uh, All these things we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Lakeisha. So being a part of our show today, yeah. it's truly been a blessing to hear your story. For our Refueling Your Faith uh, listeners, please take share this episode with those who you know it would encourage, as well as take advantage of all the other episodes we have to encourage you in Christ to be the God's representatives in this world. Until next time, keep pressing. God bless.